This is from Hannah. She says, Did God have an incarnation or God man nature before the official incarnation? Since God is seen in human form or as a messenger in the Old Testament, like with Abraham. Beautiful question, because oftentimes when we do talk about God appearing as a man in the Old Testament, some people get confused and assume that means God is becoming flesh. It's going to be a little not technical, maybe a little hard to understand what I'm saying, because, again, we're dealing with God's actions and his actions as Isaiah 55, by the way, states. Isaiah 55, 8 to 9, it says, His ways are not our ways. His thoughts are not our thoughts. His ways and thoughts are higher than ours, just like the heavens are higher than the earth. <clears throat> what you have in the Old Testament is God appearing in the form of a man without actually becoming a flesh and blood human being. We would call that a theophany or a Christophany, an appearance of Christ in a visible form without him actually taking on the nature and becoming that very thing, right? Incarnation is different. It's not simply Jesus appearing as a man when he was born from his blessed mother. That's true. Being born as a man, that means he had the appearance of a man. But he actually became a man at that moment when he was conceived in the womb of his blessed mother by the power of the Holy Spirit and then added an additional nature that's now bound to his divine person forever and ever. That's not what's taking place in the Old Testament. God could appear in various forms. He could appear as a man. He could appear in a pillar of a cloud. He could appear as a being that just radiates like a rainbow. The Holy Spirit could appear as a dove, but they didn't become any of those things by nature. They didn't take on the nature of those things. So it's not an incarnation in which they become the very thing which form they assume. It's simply a manifestation. That's all it is. It's like when angels appear as human beings. They're not human beings. They don't have a human nature. They don't have human physical bodies, but they are created in such a way where they can assume the form of a human being without actually taking on an additional nature becoming flesh. Now, I hope that made some sense. So the difference is in the Old Testament, God can appear in visible form as a man without actually becoming flesh and taking on an additional nature, which is different to what Jesus did at the incarnation. He didn't simply appear as a man. He became a human being in every sense of the term with the exception of sin. Mm -hmm. so I don't know if that was clear. Mm -hmm. There's a difference between an incarnation and a human appearance. What is an incarnation? Incarnation is when someone actually becomes a flesh and blood human being. That only happened once to God. When Jesus Christ, the eternal Son, the eternal Word, right, actually became a flesh and blood human being, actually was born as a baby and grew like all human beings do, and added a second nature to his person. Isn't that clear? You guys understand the difference? Okay, is that clear? What you find in the Old Testament is not an incarnation, but a human appearance. God and angels, assuming human form, appearing as human beings without actually becoming humans by nature. Right? You can call it a theophany, but then you have to be more specific. Is it a theophany or a Christophany? A manifestation of Christ before he became an actual flesh and blood human being. I don't want to overcomplicate matters. A theophany is an appearance of God. But then you want to know which person of God appeared in human form during the Old Testament. Was it the Father, the Son, or the Holy Spirit? So then it becomes either a Christophany or a, you know, pneumophony, making up a new word. <laughs> All right. Anyway, but you get the point, right? Do you guys understand the difference between, sorry, guys. I, got, I didn't see the people dotted. An incarnation and a manifestation, right? If you understand the distinction, let me again hammer the point. Even though angels and God in the Old Testament did not actually become human beings by nature, adding an additional nature to that which they already possessed, their human appearances were still so tangible that you could actually touch the human appearance and it felt physical, right? You were touching something concrete, physical. They could eat in those human manifestations, right? Don't presume to know more than the scripture allows you to know about what angels can and cannot do 
when they appear in human form without actually becoming human beings by nature. You with me there? Because people say, well, how is that possible? I don't know. I'm not told. I'm not told how it's possible for angels who are not of the dust, who are not actually human by nature, to appear in human form that's so real and tangible that you can actually touch their bodies and it feels concrete, physical, as if it's an actual body of flesh and bone. They can eat in those bodies. We're not told how. If we're not told how they can do it, but if the Bible says they did it, that's good enough for me.